Robinhood ransomware takes down Baltimore City government networks. Well, this actually happens to a lot of small businesses, a lot of big businesses, and it's noteworthy and very impactful when it happens to a city. This happened on 5-8, well, that's when the story was, and here on 5-18-2019, we're still seeing that their network is down, and the city's actually come to a really big problem of they can't even close on a house right now because they can't file paperwork with the city to do closing paperwork for purchasing a home and many other city services, including all the inspectors. Everything's been impacted by this. It's a seriously big problem. So let's talk about and bring this up, and it's been brought up before, and other we've done implementations with even cities with this particular methodology for helping mitigate the risk and problems created by ransomware. Combating WannaCry and other ransomware with OpenZF snapshots is a May 18th of 2017, two years ago uh, today, oddly enough, blog post by Ag Systems. And this is a great way to help mitigate the risk created from ransomware. The problem with ransomware is if a user, the general way that it works right now, a user will have access to a lot of files. That user somehow gets their system with uh, the ransomware on there, and it runs around encrypting everything that user had access to. And as many companies don't follow uh, least privilege rules when they're setting up security, that person usually has too many permissions for too many things, or if they are a C-suite, C-level uh, executive person who has access to everything, so everything gets encrypted that they get their hands on. Even worse so, many times, sometimes the same person is administrative, and it then ties into their Active Directory and gives them access to the backups that get corrupted as well. These are some of the worst case scenarios, and the other big challenge that's faced here is when you're dealing with these type of uh, problems, Restoring the backups, even if they're not corrupted, when you talk about massive amounts of data, can be a problem into itself due to the time it can take to restore the backups. And this is where OpenZFS snapshots to the rescue. Now, one of the things about this, and like I said, you can use cloud backup, you can use offsite backup, but it comes back to how fast can you get restored. And ZFS snapshots are a great way to do this. And this is the important line that's really, really important to why this works. Because OpenZFS snapshots takes place at the block level of the file system. It is immune to any file level encryption by ransomware that occurs over it. Carefully planned snapshot, replication, retention, and restoration strategy can provide low level isolation you need for your storage infrastructure to quickly recover from a ransomware attack. Now I've got a video I can link to that I go more in depth and I'm probably gonna make a new version soon uh, to cover the new version of FreeNAS, but it works the same way. Uh, you can set up snapshots and the snapshots can even be set up to run every hour. They can be set up to run every half hour. You can set these up to be very fine grained. And depending on your use case, and this is, goes into the storage planning, and what these do is they're only taking snapshots of the file system as it was at that time, but not duplicating it, which would be huge, especially when you talk about uh, 570 gigs worth of data, which is my video folder. So you can see my video folder growing over time. And I only do one snapshot a day of my video folder to keep it really simple. Uh, but if I deleted everything out of my video folder, I could just roll back to that snapshot very, very quickly because I can reference it. Now, the snapshots don't take up space because they're only, as I said, a differential between when you snapshot it and changes that were made. And on a general basis, a city may have a lot of files, but they don't change that much from hour to hour. So as long as you have properly planned storage, you can keep these snapshots. And then the moment you get ransomware, you can roll back and then only losing as much data from the time of that snapshot to the other one. Obviously, there's more time involved because you want to make sure you've removed a threat so it doesn't go back and do this anymore. But this is how ZFS can help protect against that. To top that off, what about having two FreeNAS servers? Well, I do, and it makes that one more layer. So I have the snapshots set up to do once a day, and then I have it replicating once a day uh, via replication task. And I've covered a video on this too. I'll leave links to these below. But that way it takes all the data and mirrors it over. Now, one of the important things about when you integrate this and some of the planning that needs to go involved in here is some people like to start using the same password everywhere. They're like, oh, it'd be convenient to manage my FreeNAS system with the same password that I manage my Active Directory with. 
Well, that's where some of the problems come in. And if the uh, attackers get in there and they realize they have access to this, this is where I've seen people... Um, so to speak, blame this, but it really comes down to how you do your security. You need to make sure that they do not have the same password. I know it's convenient to federate everything and have one global login, uh, so you can just log in everywhere with the same credentials because it's convenient, but do make sure, because even if you present FreeNAS via an SMB share, to a Windows machine. As long as the root password, the admin password for FreeNAS is different than there, it would be an entirely another isolated layer that would have to be cracked. And there's no known vulnerabilities as of right now in FreeNAS. So for them to attack it, if you have a good strong password for the admin and management of this, you are safe as long as there's not any vulnerabilities that are found in it. And like I said, as of right now, there are no known vulnerabilities. There's no brute force method other than the fact that actual brute force where they guess passwords, and that's not the most effective method anyways. Uh, matter of fact, it's yeah, really slow, and hopefully you have some type of logging that will alert you that something on your network is attacking and brute forcing. Hopefully you have it on a separate network as well as far as the admin interface goes. But as long as you keep this separate, the WannaCry attack, if you're using an SMB share, for example, uh, the ransomware can go through and modify all the files on the SMB share, but does not modify this system inside of here. It's immune to it because this is controlling things at the block level. Same thing as you present this to Windows as an iSCSI server, you're going to have the same effect. It's not going to have access to your free NAS machine. It's going to have access to the data on it, but free NAS snapshots work one layer below at the block level, therefore are able to restore to those previous states provided you have snapshots. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully someone thinks about deploying this. Uh, this is one of the reasons we like these as storage servers and not being the same as your Windows file server. It offers that extra layer of protection because it's a separate system by which you're storing files and the ZFS file system is very robust. And just in the case of people losing files, having hourly snapshot backups, we have had a lot of clients, not because of ransomware, but we've rolled back a snapshot because they lost something. And you know, you're talking about hourly backups versus a nightly backup system or something that goes offsite. It can be very quick just to roll back a snapshot. And like I said, I'll leave videos below where I go in depth to both uh, snapshots and replication. Uh, so you can kind of follow through on more of that. They're done in the previous version of FreeNAS, but they still all that carries forward into the new version of FreeNAS as well. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.